Narcissists are marked by an inflated sense of their own importance, whether it's overtly or covertly. They struggle in genuine relationships because they lack authenticity. Authenticity is when what's on the inside matches what's on the outside, and they are anything but authentic. Narcissists are like aliens that come to this planet and have to copy the behaviors of others that will get them what they want. Now, if you are struggling in a narcissistic relationship and you want these specific signs of a Christian narcissist, I want to encourage you to jump on up to this video here, or if you're listening on the podcast, jump on back for a few episodes and you will see the seven signs of a Christian narcissist. And one of the most difficult relationships that you will ever have to endure is with a narcissist. On their best day, they are manipulative and controlling. On their worst day, they are emotionally abusive and destructive. And the term narcissist may be thrown around loosely to describe every ex-spouse and person that you don't like, but make no mistake, narcissism is a real problem that can wreak havoc in your life. But what do you do when as a Christian, you're told to love one another? turn the other cheek, forgive, bear one another's burdens. Well, that's why I want to talk to you today about the common narcissistic behaviors and what the Bible says we should do about them. Well, welcome, my friend, to another edition of the Building Faith Podcast. I am so excited to be here with you today. I'm your host, Chris Reese, and it is my mission, as always, to provide you with biblical solutions to life's tough challenges. One common trait of narcissists is their grandiose sense of themselves. It is all about them. Whether they are overtly demanding or covertly manipulating, narcissists think they are better than you. And if they're not better than you, then they've been somehow jilted in life and it's probably your fault. So they are your classic entitled brats. Second Timothy three, one through five says, but understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. There you have it, my friend. That's what the Bible says. Avoid such people. Let's go on. Another common trait of narcissists is they are manipulative. Look, let's call this for what it is. Manipulation is a form of lying. And I realize that every sweet sounding woman with a high pitched voice may seem so innocent, but behind the manipulation is a series of lies meant to get you to think that she has your best interest at heart, but the truth is it's only meant to serve her purpose. And I see this a lot in Christian circles, especially with covert narcissism. They come across very timid, very innocent, but deep inside they are manipulative control freaks. Now, who else do we know is a liar? Satan. John 8, 44 tells us that he is the father of lies. He is the master manipulator. And these manipulators even exist in the church. Here's what 2 Peter 2 says. It gives a graphic description over what to do about false teachers. And in 2 Timothy 3, 6, we are warned about manipulators who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. So what does the Bible say about narcissists? Beware. Narcissists are also unforgiving. Look, make no mistake about it. Narcissists are grudge holders. They may say that they've forgiven you, especially if it's something that they know would put them in a favorable light. But make no mistake, my friend, that offense is waiting to be used at a more opportune time against you. However, if they sin against you, they will demand forgiveness and trust. They will be like the parable of the unforgiving debtor in Matthew 18. So 
this uh, this man owed a lot of money and he was forgiven of his debts. But immediately after he was forgiven of his debt, he now went to somebody else who owed him just a fraction, a sliver of what he was just forgiven of. And he literally beat the man. Narcissists are not forgiving. They're also unteachable. Narcissists have to give the image of knowing everything. Remember, their image is everything. So here's a potential catchphrase that gives away a lot of narcissists. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that. Look, it doesn't matter if you just asked them something and they said they didn't have an answer to and then someone else gave that answer. It's a compulsion for them to say, oh yeah, I knew that. They can't help it. Now, in some cases, they don't want to be seen as not having all the answers. In other cases, they actually think they know everything. Now, this is not the case for all narcissists. So just because someone admits to not knowing something doesn't mean that they don't struggle with narcissistic traits. In fact, actually, the covert narcissist will often play that sweet, innocent victim who just doesn't know anything. But even if they're outright rejecting your wisdom or saying yes to your face and then discarding you later, the truth is that narcissists are not teachable. Proverbs 15.32 says, if you reject discipline, you only harm yourself. But if you listen to correction, you grow in understanding. Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom, humility, precedes honor. Look, it's not that you're their teacher, but in relationships, we're always teaching and learning from each other. Not so with a narcissist. Control and power are their main focus. And the next thing that we discover about narcissists is they are divisive. A narcissist's goal is to divide and conquer. They will seek to sabotage relationships by slandering you or causing you to slander others, often under the guise of caring and praying for someone. Look, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Romans 16, 17. So, what does the Bible say? Watch out. The next trait of a narcissist is they're fake. Overt or covert narcissists pretend to be something that they're not. They have a very fragile self-image and they will work desperately to protect it. Scripture tells us, let no one deceive you with empty words for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Rather, expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes light. So what does the Bible say? Expose them. Hmm. My friend, Jesus never tolerated toxic, narcissistic behavior. For a greater teaching on how Jesus handled narcissists, I want to invite you to go over to this video here. He was well aware of their various tactics to distract him from his mission. And in many cases, Jesus had little to no contact with these toxic individuals. In Matthew 15, 14, Jesus says, let them, the Pharisees, alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind man guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Matthew 15, 14. Another way of saying this, have nothing to do with them. So you can find yourself constantly turning the other cheek only to realize that both cheeks are rather bloody for no reason. Because here's what the Bible says about how to handle narcissists. Number one, avoid them. 
2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Number two, expose them, Ephesians 5, 6 through 14. Number three, watch out for them, Romans 16, 17 through 18. Have nothing to do with them, Matthew 15, 14. And beware, 2 Timothy 3, 6. These people are acting in their nature, and it is a nature that they have chosen to follow. It is likely, my friend, that God has reached his hand out again and again and again to give the narcissist an opportunity to turn from their ways. And I want to assure you that if God hasn't been able to change them, what makes you think you can? So trying to love a narcissist into changing is like hugging a crocodile and expecting it to love you in return. If you want to learn how to handle all types of toxic people, I want to invite you to grab a copy of my free Toxic People Survival Guide. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below. And if you have been hurt by a toxic mother, I want to invite you to check out my online course, How to Heal from a Toxic Mother. And if you have chosen to stay in a relationship with your narcissist, check out this video on how to use the narcissist to your advantage and live in peace.